So in my last video, I turned a normal RC car into one that automatically brakes in front of obstacles. However, the moment I started cranking up the speed, this system completely failed. And this got me thinking, rather than just trying to fix the braking system, why not also turn this into my dream car, the Porsche Taycan? Right now, the car uses ultrasonic sensors, which use sound to measure an object's distance. The problem is that the refresh rate, or how often they take measurements, is just not good enough for when the car is at moderate to high speeds. After looking at some recommendations from you guys, I came across a new type of sensor, called a time of flight sensor or TOF sensor for short. Rather than using sound, TOF sensors use a laser and measure the time it takes for the light to reflect off an object. Since this takes way less time, it lets them measure distances much more frequently compared to ultrasonic sensors. I noticed that this sensor comes in two versions, a 4 meter and a 6 meter. Naturally, I was leaning toward the 6 meter for that extra range. But then, I saw that the 6 meter version would force me to switch out of my Arduino Nano, which would mean redesigning the entire control board. To be safe, I ran a quick test on the car's braking distance. The result? It was far less than I expected, even less than 4 meters. So I can stick with the smaller sensor, save myself a ton of work, and keep my existing electronics. Another reason why the car failed to stop was because the code didn't actually know how fast the car was going. Instead, it was taking a really rough estimate of the speed through the current percentage of the throttle. Speed is really important when you want to do reliable obstacle avoidance, since it lets the car decide how much space you really need in order to stop in time. To achieve this, I'm using a cheap Hall effect sensor to monitor the magnetic field. By putting a tiny magnet on the central axle, the sensor counts how many rotations are made per minute, thus giving me the car's speed. I decided to also add an ESP32 cam, which basically acts like a tiny Wi-Fi camera, so that I can just get some extra visibility when the car is far away. Settled on which sensors I was going to use, I needed a way to compactly hold all of them. The way the old sensor mount was attached took just way too much space, so I needed to find a new spot to secure it to. Thankfully, after examining the front of the chassis, I found two very promising screw holes. On my third attempt, I finally got the mount to the right width where it perfectly lined up with the existing holes. The difference compared to the old sensor enclosure is huge, and I think it looks way cleaner now. Initially, I was going to 3D model the entire car myself so that I could design it around my current chassis and sensors. However, I severely miscalculated how hard 3D modeling cars is. After lots of frustration and many wasted hours, I abandoned this idea and instead went searching for a ready-made 3D model. I eventually found a really good looking 3D model of the Taycan on Sketchfab. From there, I just put it into the slicer and yeah, it turned out it's not as easy as that. The problem was that the 3D model I found and basically almost every car model out there was made to be used for renders, not 3D printing. This meant that the walls were way too thin to be 3D printable. To fix this, I started by opening up the model in Blender, where I made the walls thicker with the help of a modifier. I also simplified the model since at the moment, it had way too much geometry for the slicer to process. After I was done in Blender, I put the model into Fusion 360, where I add some cutouts to the front. I also had to enlarge the wheel wells quite a bit in order to fit my car's huge wheels. To be able to add details later on, I found some models of the headlights and used them to make a negative in the 3D model so that I could eventually print out the lights separately and have them be a different color. After also cutting it in half and adding in some mounting holes, I sent the halves off to get printed individually. I think now is also a great time to tell you about this video sponsor, PCBWay. 
If you don't happen to have a 3D printer, then PCBWay has your back. Besides offering quality and quick PCB manufacturing services, they also have CNC machining services and 3D printing with many different color and material options to upgrade the look of your project. You can easily upload your 3D files to their website and customize it to your liking before you place your order. Be sure to check out PCB Way in the link below to learn more. For printing the parts, I added mounting holes to both halves of the car so that I can attach them with bolts. This worked so well that, in fact, I didn't even need to use glue to strengthen them. Unfortunately though, when I put the body on top of the car, the wheel wells were completely misaligned. So I just fit in the new rear body and the wheels are much more aligned than they were before. And it'll look even better when it's attached. After eventually fixing the wheel wells and reprinting the entire rear half of the car, it was ready for me to work on the details to make this look more like the real Taycan. I also went ahead and designed this really cool looking wide body kit to try and hide the wheels a bit more and make it a bit sportier. To make the alignment process easier, I designed holes in the body and small studs in the parts which act like little connectors. Originally, my plan was to use spray paint on the windows, but after thinking about it a bit more, I became unsure how neat they would turn out. So instead, I 3D printed them. By printing them at just 1mm thick, they come out super flexible, which lets them curve around the car's body. With the added mods and accent colors, I think this build is really coming along. But looking at it, it's still missing one big thing. Those iconic Porsche Taycan rims. So now that I have the tire taken off the rims, all I need to do is just figure out how to recreate this shape right here. And then I can just make whatever design I want on the front. Although they aren't exactly the same as the ones on the real Taycan, I'm pretty happy with the design. Unfortunately, the other tires seem to have way more glue on them, but with the help of a hairdryer, I was eventually able to get them off. Alright, now that looks way better. And the huge wheels don't stand out nearly as much anymore. But the body is still not attached to the chassis, so let's go ahead and fix that. Because I need to be able to occasionally access the inside in order to charge the battery and flash the code, I'm going to use these tiny magnets to keep the body on. To hold them in place, I designed some tiny cutouts for them to slide into. After printing out some spacers, the magnets align perfectly, keeping the body attached to the chassis while allowing easy access to the internals. Even though the old control board was designed for the ultrasonic sensors, I was able to reuse the pins for the new TOF sensors, since they also run on 5 volts. The sensors came with these really nice connectors, which saved me a lot of time soldering and made the cable management way easier. Since the Arduino Nano only has one I2C port, I also had to add on a multiplexer, which lets the Arduino read all three of the sensors individually. Once the rest of the components were connected, I moved on to the code. Because of all the new distance and speed sensors, the entire detection logic needed to be rewritten. I'm not going to go into it in this video, so if you're curious, you can check out the link below to learn more. And with all that done, here it is. The first RC Porsche Taycan with obstacle avoidance. Let's give it a test. When I started testing out the car, 
I kept running into the issue of it constantly phantom breaking, or stopping way too early. Later, it turned out that the body was blocking some of the sensors, and once I made the cutouts a bit bigger, the issue went away and I was able to properly drive the car. As you can see, when I drive the car towards an obstacle, it breaks in front of the box completely by itself. Thanks to the new speed measurement system, the car is now able to drive close to objects at low speeds, while at the same time braking earlier when I increase the throttle. But one of the biggest things that got improved came from me switching to the new light-based sensors. Before, if you were making a sudden action, such as rapidly turning, the car would almost always fail to see a new obstacle in time to stop. Thanks to the faster sensors, the detection system can run much more often and detect these sudden changes, letting it stop. Overall, I'm happy with how the project turned out. Thanks to the new body, the car looks way sportier and much more refined, while also acting as a model of my dream car. The new obstacle avoidance system is also much more improved over the old, and it now successfully stops me from hitting the walls of my house and completely ruining them. However, there are also some drawbacks. The main one being that the extra weight coming from the 3D printed body makes the car quite a bit slower and adds more stress on the suspension, which makes off-roading basically impossible. Despite this, I'm still happy with the end result, especially since the body is really easy to detach, letting me drive the car how it was before anytime I want. And with that, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you press the like button and I will see you in the next one.